What's up, you guys? It's Bob here with Midnight Snack. Midnight Snack. It's it's what it's what it sounds like it's gonna be. It's a snack. Midnight. You you know the drill. We we take some food. We eat it. We talk about it. We talk about pricing. We talk about nutrition. We talk about ingredients. We take a look at the packaging. Take a look at the food before we eat it. Take a taste test. Give you a verdict, and that's how it goes. So if you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and hit the like button real quick to move this video around with the old algorithm and so more people can see it and I can buy more chicken pot pies and the world can keep on turning. And also, if you're looking for a remote job, please check out this collegelife.com. There's a link in the description and if you need one, you can find a remote job there. There's all kinds of positions, a lot of entry level and recent graduate, uh, college graduate positions. And then also once you find, and then plus there's other jobs too, beside, in addition to those, but a lot of those entry level, recent grad jobs and then other levels. And after you find a solid remote work from home job, you can also use the website to find a solid credit union where you can go and put your money once you're making bank and make dividends off your checking account and do investments and stuff like that. So that's all I have to say about that. And we are going to move into the review now. Let's take a look at this Bremer chicken pot pie. Not the first Bremer product I've bought from Aldi. I've been pleased with stuff from them in the past. Their meatballs for one are pretty good. And so this is one of Aldi's brands. They've got uh, their Aldi twice as nice guarantee on the back there. Uh, item replaced, money refunded if you don't like it. So if there's an issue with it, then you uh, you can you can get your money back and they'll replace it, presumably with either a new chicken pot pie like this one, or if you really can't stand these for some reason, they'll probably go and find one from a different place and get you a different Bremer chicken pot pie. But anyhow... This is a good looking uh, meal, I think, it, based on the picture at least. And yeah, it's enlarged to show detail and yeah, you're supposed to keep it frozen and it's got to cook thoroughly and all that good stuff. But you can microwave it in minutes, which I really like. You can probably also, I'm sure there's a, yeah, there's a conventional oven. We'll get to that in a minute. There's a conventional oven method, but Bremer microwave in minutes for one uh, chicken pot pie. They say it's a flaky pastry crust filled with chicken, carrots, potatoes, and peas in a savory gravy. So, looks good to me. It's got a lot of stuff. I, I've always been a fan of chicken pot pies. I don't eat them that often. But when I do, I, I don't always eat chicken pot pies. But when I do, I, I enjoy them. So, this has 380 calories in it. 7 grams of fat, which is 35% of your daily value of sat saturated fat. 35% of your daily value of saturated fat. And 40% of your daily value of sodium, which is a lot. So... But if you don't eat other things that have sodium in it, I mean, sodium is something that's necessary. You, you got to have some sodium in your diet. So you can't go with none because that could be just as bad as having too much. So you need to eat whatever, whatever works for you, but you do have to have some, I, I think. I'm pretty sure you should probably check with a real dietitian on that, but I, I think so. Anyhow. Looking at the back, 380 calories, as I said. So out of your total fat for the day, you're looking at 24% of your daily value, 19 grams. And then out of that 19 grams, you got 7 grams of saturated fat, 35% of your daily value. And then total carbs, uh, oh, and cholesterol. You're looking at 35 milligrams of cholesterol, which is 12% of your daily value. And 42 grams of total carbs, which is 15% of your daily value. And actually a decent amount of protein because there's a lot of things going on here between the crust and the chicken and the gravy. So you've got 9 grams of protein, which is 14% of your daily value. And then you've got 1.4 milligrams of iron. Maybe it's microgram. No, milligrams of iron. Um, zero. Yeah, there's no vitamin D, hardly any calcium, hardly any potassium. But you got a little bit of iron in there. So, oh, wow, I almost forgot the price. This at Aldi, the one that I shop at in the Heartland, runs 89 cents. So it's very, very cheap. I've seen cheap chicken pot pies in a lot of other places too, which is great because it, it's got a, a hefty amount of calories, good amount of varying nutrients in it. So if you're on a budget, like if you're in college or something, then these are great. You don't want to overdo them and eat too many of them because there's a lot of saturated fat in one. And so you can, you can go over your daily amount pretty quickly. Like you, you can't be eating four or five of these a day. Like you're going to have a heart attack eventually if you do that. But Anyhow, 89 cents, great price, uh, double check, uh, yeah, 89 cents. So let's take a look at these ingredients. There are a lot of them before we get to the cooking instructions and then I go make it and come back here and we talk about it a little bit more. It's got a lot because there's a lot going on in here. Water, cooked chicken, yeah, let me just find some of the fun to pronounce ones 
or hard to pronounce ones, I guess. Uh, stero steroid, steroid lactolite, lactolate. Sodium steroid lactolate. That is the most chemically sounding thing I think I've ever read. Uh, uh, clearly, it, obviously, it's got something to do with sodium, but mm, oleoresin, turmeric, that, sound, that does sound healthy, actually. Hydrolyzed soy protein, uh, protein concentrate, xanthan gum, carotene, the crust is made of wheat flour, lard, hydrogenated lard, contains milk, soy, wheat. Okay, so I skipped over a few things, but yeah, that, I think that... Uh, whatever it was, takes the cake, not the oleo resin, but the sodium steroid lactolite. That's, that's something. Okay. So microwave instructions, we got to cut a slit in the top. We need to microwave on high for hundred percent power for 45 minutes. Don't cook in the microwave. Oh, don't cook it in microwaves below, uh, 1,100, 1100 Watts as pot pie might not cook throughout. Let it stand for three minutes. This is kind of, no matter which way you slice it, this actually does take kind of a long time to cook. And I think late at night you could probably handle this because, you know, it's, you got four to five minutes, then three minutes of sitting. Pretty soon you're coming up on 10 minutes because then you got to check and you got to make sure it's cooked to 165 because you've got chicken in there. And I'm sure the chicken's probably pre-cooked, but you still need to make sure and then, oh, also, before we go downstairs and I cook it and then I come back, there's going to be milk, soy, and wheat in here. So if you have any allergies for milk, soy, and wheat, you need to be careful because depending on whether you can handle that or not, you probably should stay away from it unless you think you can handle it. I don't know, because that's the crust and then the, the gravy. I don't know where the soy comes in. Maybe that's part of the gravy. Maybe it's part of the chicken. I, I'm not sure. But... That's all I have to say so far. Oh, and then there's also barcodes all over the place, like most Aldi products. Um, but I'm going to go cook this, and I will return shortly. If you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and hit the like button if you're still watching right now, because that'd be great. And also check out this collegelife.com if you need a remote job. I'll be right back. And we're back with Midnight Snack. 1 a.m. East Coast, 10 p.m. West Coast. Midnight in the heartland. I got this thing cooked, but first thing I noticed, which I, I should have... I feel like nobody ever does this, but it says don't cook it in a microwave oven that's lower than 1100 watts. And I, I've never ever looked into that. I've never checked for any product ever. This time I probably should have because I decided to take the temperature just to be sure. And sure enough, in the center, this thing was only like 65 degrees. I think it was actually like a piece of chicken was still frozen, but, and a lot of it was cooked. I mean, a lot of it was, I think 160 or close. But so I threw it back in the microwave for another two minutes and I'd done like just about five minutes to put it in because it says cook four to five minutes. But I put it back in for another two minutes and that got it fully cooked. But then I looked at the microwave and my microwave, I guess, is only a thousand watts. So that's actually something that's kind of important and you should check in addition to checking the temperature of these things when you get done cooking them. Because you never know if, if you eat under, I'm sure the chicken is pre-cooked, although I, I don't think it says... It says water chicken. I don't, I don't, this chicken I don't think is pre-cooked either. I think it, it actually might need to cook in your mic, because usually they say it's pre-cooked. Chicken. Yeah, I think, don't, don't, okay, yeah, and just from safe, some safety points that they go over, and by the way, I'm also waiting for this to cool down, because it's hot as hell, and I don't want to burn the inside of my mouth off eating it, but just some safety points they have. Keep it frozen. Don't thaw. Do not refreeze. Don't prepare in a toaster oven. Do not reuse the tray. It must be cooked thoroughly to an internal temperature of 165, and do not eat frozen or uncooked. So a toaster oven, I can see people trying to cook this in a toaster oven, because it kind of makes sense. Like you just, it's simple, it's small, you open the toaster oven up. And I'm sure if you're brave enough, you, I mean, I'm sure it's possible to heat it up enough to cook it in a toaster oven. But actually what I imagine would happen was maybe this, the, uh, the, you know, the pie crust or the, the pie pan, the little mini pie pan on it would probably catch on fire. So don't do that. Just keep it in the microwave. But I guess a conventional oven could do that too. I don't know. 
but they really harp on the no toaster oven thing because underneath the conventional oven they say don't prepare the toaster oven so just don't do that um, I think we're probably getting close to being able to eat it and yeah I took the temperature um, looks pretty good if you want to I had to cut a slit in the top of it to vent it or whatever for whatever reason I had to cut a slit in the top so that's why there's kind of a hole now because after I stuck the thermometer in I, I checked some other spots but let's do this let's see what's going on here figure out what's let's figure out what's happening in this thing it's, wow this is actually kind of tough to okay here we go this is the bremer chicken pot pie and it's just a chicken pot pie this is like a classic Lake crust, chicken pot pie, nothing fancy. It's got gravy, peas, carrots, and I think it's okay to eat now. Wish me luck. First impressions, very good. The chicken is a little mechanical tasting, I'm not gonna lie, because it's been, it's obviously been mechanically separated, I think, if you take a look at, um, you, oh, yeah, mechanically separated chicken. So yeah, it's been, it's been processed in much the same way that like chicken strips would be processed, or like popcorn chicken or whatever. But I think the taste is good, and I think the gravy is good, I think everything else is tasty. Um, very cheap, good price. So it's kind of strenuous to make it. If you're having it for dinner, it's not strenuous, but like if it's going to be a snack, it might be kind of tough. Good snack though. So I'm going to stick this with 7.91 out of 10. 7.91 out of 10. Recommend it. Absolutely. 89 cents. It's hard to beat that with that many calories and the different nutrients you're going to get in that. A little on the fattier side with more sodium. So if you're trying to watch that stuff, it's probably something to avoid. Like if, you, if you're if you kind of an older person or if you have a kidney problem or something, or you, your sodium intake needs to be very carefully moderated. You might want to avoid it. But if you're fairly healthy and you're just trying to save some money and have something tasty once in a while, very good. So with that being said, please like this video so you can move it around and I can buy more 89 cent chicken pot pies in the future. And also check out this collegelife.com if you're looking for a remote job because you can find one there and then you can find a cool credit union where you can earn dividends and stuff off your checking account and you can just be in a good financial position probably because those those are good financial communities, credit unions. And yeah, that's that. So this has been Midnight Snack. I'm Bob and I will see you next time.